Start the unboxing and the features of the Torero. Here's what the scope looks like. I love the look of it, very sleek. It is a one to six by 24 objective. Your ocular is 36, your tube diameter is 30 millimeters, your diopter is a plus two, minus two. Exit pupil is three millimeters by nine. It has fully multi coated lenses. Your click values are half MOA. You have 120 degrees of adjustment inside the sink. That is a lot of, uh, of adjustment between your elevation and windage. Now, your reticle is a mat three. What it means by Mat 3 is it looks like this. I like that reticle a lot. It has six brightness illuminations, 2032 battery, parallax set at 100 yards. Here's your field of view at 100 yards. I'm sure that's at your one power and your, your six power. Your eye relief is 100 millimeters. Now, I don't know what 100 millimeters is, so I looked it up. It is 3.9 inches or 4 inches. Your overall length is 10 inches long. Your weight here is 530 grams. Again, I don't know what 530 grams is, so I looked it up. It's 8.7 ounces. All right, so let's get this bad boy open and show you what it looks like. Sorry for the interruption, guys, but I got to thank my sponsors real quick. JSD Supply for sponsoring the channel, for supplying us with this Patmos Lower Parts Kit, the Matador Arms Mat 9, and uh, you guys can also get these Gideon Optics products over there. Just use coupon code DELTA10 at checkout. Save yourself 10% off your final purchase on your Gideon Optics products. Well, this is Re9 Safety, guys. Go over and check out Re9 Safety. Get yourself a Target stand or a target like this these targets are very cool you guys can actually use these to put other targets in to play pigeons that kind of stuff so go over to re9 safety and jst supply links in the description down below as you open this up the presentation looks very nice i like this a lot the first thing i'm noticing right off the bat is they're giving you a five-year warranty on this um very nice goes over some of the information i'm going to put it right there so you guys can see that and remember it is a five-year warranty so you get a throw lever, that's very cool. You get your tools to uh, mount it on if you need. Looks like you get some more tools over here and uh, maybe a flash kill by the look of it. Let's go ahead and just open this up and see what we get. We got another kind of throw lever. We got a tool to adjust the turrets when we need to. Now this, uh, the turrets do pull up, adjust, and you can adjust them and turn them to zero, set them to zero once you find your zero. So that's very cool. And your flash kill. Get a uh, kind of a big reference guide here is what it looks like. Uh, for all their different scopes and products that they offer. Let's do a Cobra TRA uh, on one of our ARs, maybe even a Cobra MTR on one of the pistols. That would be kind of a cool review. But uh, what we are going over today is the Torero 1 to 6 by 24. On the back, just a bunch of information on different kind of red dots that they offer. Here is the scope itself. We'll take this out, set it off to the side. Here's the owner's manual. Uh, the owner's manual is uh, some information for all the first focal plane scopes that they offer. Uh, I do like it as a first focal plane. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with first focal planes, but your, your reticle starts out really big like this, and then as you zoom in, it zooms down onto that reticle for more precise shots. That is really cool. I like that feature. So one thing I am noticing looking at this is I wanted to look at the, the waterproof rating. Waterproof rating here says that it is IPX67. The number at the very end there, six means it's waterproof, so it's like rain. Seven means it's submergible um, for up to 30 minutes at one meter. That, I I don't know why it's six, seven. So I guess it means it kind of is, kind of isn't. Uh, so that might be something they might want to address in the future in their owner's manuals. Uh, I will do a little bit more research into that before we start uh, dunking this in water and doing our freeze and our heat test on it. So, and last but not least, we have a nice, ooh, that is a nice thick, clean, clean cloth, lens cleaning cloth. Very, very nice. So here is the scope in all its glory. You get your lens covers, uh, nice flip up lens covers, good tactile clicking. Like I said, this piece, this tool here is for uh, taking this screw out here, pulling your cap off and re-zeroing it if you need be. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it right where it's at. So that way we know straight from the factory where we came in at. Very nice. And to put our flash kill on is as simple as taking this off. And we have a little uh, 
like thread protector inside there so you don't damage your your threads very nice i like that that's a good idea i haven't seen any other company do that and there's your flash kill for your lens that's very nice let's see if this fits over that yes it does so if you wanted to run it that way you could the other thing is we got this uh, throw lever so you got kind of a small throw lever and a large throw lever you can either go with this throw lever like that that's probably the way i would prefer it if you're going to run this in competition you want a bigger throw lever they have provided you a bigger throw lever. Now this thing is pretty cool. Um, I've had other companies similar to this and what they do is these will come apart and they will mount to your zoom. So I'm not gonna use this one, but I'm going to go ahead and show you guys kind of how it would work. You would open this up. Uh, this is aluminum, it is not plastic. Uh, so very good on them. I'm glad they didn't add to a plastic one. I have seen some companies cheap out and go with the plastic ones on there. So if you wanted to use this throw lever, this is how it would go. Like I said, they got little notches for each one of these. So you just throw it, put it where you want it at. And that way you got a great big throw lever to throw. It's not quite so small. Um, I, like I said, I prefer to have the smaller ones just for the simple fact uh, that I don't want it to snag. It gives me enough. Uh, and this is a nice smooth bell adjustment that it doesn't, I don't feel anything really binding and throw it further back. You could just put it anywhere on that zoom bell that you want, that zoom adjustment. And Boom, you're set to go. So that is a cool option. You guys can reach over and grab this, pull over. Like I said, this is a nice, smooth glass. I haven't even looked through this glass yet, but that is a nice, smooth throw. It's not sticky, it's not hard, uh, but it, it doesn't, it's not gonna loosen up and fall over on you or anything like that. Uh, so if you had a quick throw, you needed to throw, there you go. Go back, very cool like that. Uh, the diopter, let's check this out. Diopter, that, that's nice, I like that diopter. It's not sticky and it's not loose. I've had some of these where they're really loose and I've had some where you're really having to crank them down to get them where you want. So that's very nice. I like that. Okay, so I got it back in the configuration I want to run it on. Before we go real quick, I want to go over their uh, their mount. They did send a mount, which is very nice. I appreciate that. Uh, little cantilever mount, one piece mount. Uh, they do have the underlocking lugs right here. That is very nice. The tool does, uh, does come with it. So... We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna get this mounted up onto a rifle. Uh, before we get out to the range, we're gonna take some weights and compare it to a few other scopes because 18 ounces, let's just call it 19 ounces even, for a first focal plane scope is very light. Uh, if you guys have watched some of my other videos, you'd see some other first focal plane scopes that we've ran, especially one to six first focal planes. Uh, they were up closer to the high 20s. So this might even come in after we get it on the mount, this might even come in at about 10 ounces lighter than some of those others. So I'm gonna go ahead, mount this onto the mount, put the scope covers on it and get it ready to go onto a rifle. Now that we got the Red Wind Terrero over here, let's go ahead and we'll compare the weight to some of these other LPVOs out here. Uh, this here is an AT3 Tactical Red Tail, second focal plane, one to six by 24. Weighs 21.2 ounces with mount lens and everything, lens covers and everything. This is a CV Life. 1 to 6 by 24, 21 ounces, 21.07 ounces. Now, this is a big heavy one. This is a 1 to 10 uh, by 34 tube by 28 objective. This thing is huge. Uh, this is a second focal plane, but it is a 1 to 10. And we are 28.08 ounces. But, guys, like I said, this is a 34 millimeter tube. This is a Vect Op. And it, uh, this is one of my lighter uh, scopes I have at 19.08 five ounces. These so far have all been second focal plane. Here's a fire filled. It is weighing in at 21.01 ounces. It's called 21 ounces. And here is the other first focal plane scope that we have. Now this is a one to six by 24 optic objective as well. It is by Discovery Opt and it is a first focal plane scope completely decked out with lens covers and everything the way we'd run it. 28.17 ounces. Wow, that is a heavy first focal plane scope, but that's pretty traditional for first focal plane scopes. They are heavy. So as I said, this feels very light to me as a first focal plane scope. And it is about 25 ounces. We'll call it 20. It is 24.9 ounces. We'll call it 25 ounces. So it weighs three ounces less than this one here does. Now that is very light for a first focal plane scope. All right, here we go. So the uh, Red Wind. One to six in the freezer. Let's see. See you in an hour. All right, one hour later, 
Let's see how the red wind is doing. Nice and frosty. Looks like it's working. All right, let's go ahead and stick it in the oven. Ooh, a little warm. All right, let's go ahead. We'll uh, throw it on in. See how she does. See you in an hour. All right, just over an hour later. Let's see how she did. Still working. Let's get this mounted to a rifle, get up to the range, get it zeroed, see how she held up. That's what the reticle looks like and the glass looks like. Edge to edge clarity. I mean, that thing is amazing. There's no black around the edge. Uh, I wish I could get you guys, give me a second and I'll see if I can turn the illumination on. There's what your illumination looks like on. Uh, right now it's cloudy outside, so it looks good. Uh, but it, I can tell you, if this is a bright sunny day and you're looking at something white, that's not gonna light up really bright, okay? So let's go ahead and swap this down to one. And there is what it looks like at a one power. Reticle is still on. Uh, I'd like to see that reticle maybe a little bit brighter. That way it can act like a little bit more like a red dot. Uh, so, but it's doing well. I like the edge to edge clarity. They got the glass down it looks like. Uh, but I don't think they got the, uh, the illumination down. The illumination could probably be a little bit brighter. First, three shots were completely over the target right over here. Aiming here, shooting over here. I took a big chance on it, I ran it up. We ended up going up 18 MOA, so it's quite a bit. Uh, and then I shot, aiming here, hit here. Uh, so that was our distance over. So another, I don't know, seven inches, six, seven inches back this way. So I just moved our target over here. And this is where we're hitting at now, right here, a little high, but it is an AK. Um, I adjusted a little too low at first. These are my last three shots. So uh, I saw these, I saw this one hit and this one hit, so I adjusted down a little bit more. So uh, it can be adjusted. It's uh, clicking right where it's supposed to. Uh, I went up a little too much. I went up three clicks, so I probably needed to only go up one or two from here. It's tracking like it's supposed to. It's doing like it's supposed to. So very good on Red Wind. Now let's go ahead and have some fun with this bad boy. All right, we're going to do a little bit of a torture test on the uh, the Red Wind. Uh, first torture test we're going to do is the good old traditional chicken. All right, let's see if the Red Wind held up to that. Pretty sure it did, but you never know. All right, that's on one power, held up just fine. Let's go on to the next test. And that's just a, a good old water beat down. Now, I don't suspect this to do anything. If it does, the optic is pretty bad, but I've never had an optic go bad from a little water beat down. So let's, uh, let's try it again. Again on one power. Gun's empty. It's kind of simulating a really bad rainstorm. <laughs> All right.
Well, one thing, the flash kill held some water in there. So I guess that would be the one drawback to the flash kill. But it's clear. No problem. All right. Let's uh, let's go ahead and dry this thing out and have some fun. So we're finishing up the video on the Red Wind 1 to 6 by 24 first focal plane, the Torero is what they're calling it. This thing is pretty cool. Don't mind the dog. She's just having a good old time running around out here chasing frogs and squirrels and all sorts of stuff. So let's get into the Red Wind. The Red Wind Torero here. Now guys, I think Red Wind has got this thing down pat. This thing has a lot of features for the price that comes in at. You're looking at about $150 to $160 and they give you options whether you want to use their one piece scope or their one piece rings or not. Uh, that if you want logos on it or not, very cool. I like that Red Wind is thinking outside of the box and giving you a bunch of little options at the first when you very first buy it. Um, one of the other features, I don't know if I went over, but we're gonna go over it again, the illumination on this. Now the illumination is not daylight bright, so if I turn it on right now and I look at the green trees, I can barely make, I can see the. I can see it, but you're not gonna see red. You're gonna see, still it's gonna be the, the, the reticle. It's gonna be kind of a blackish reticle, blackish reddish reticle. Uh, you look up at the sky, blue clouds, or white clouds, you don't see the, the redness. Um, you look off to the white snow, you don't see the redness. Now if I look into like a shade or something, I can see that red. I can see that reticle turn red. And that's at the six power. I would like to see this reticle or the illumination maybe a little bit brighter. That would be my one big caveat that I would say the big downfall to it is. But beyond that, I have yet to find a, a budget friendly optic that is daylight bright. So I'm not going to beat Red One up too bad over that. That is, I mean, it's an etch reticle. So really the way I look at it is it should be used for night. Um, the only other thing I can say is when you have this turned down to one power and if this was bright enough to be able to see that reticle, you could use that horseshoe more like a red dot. And that's what I would intend that for, would be more for like a red dot usage during the day. Uh, beyond that, we, we had no problems uh, cranking this up to six. Uh, I did most of my shooting on about three power, uh, which worked out very well. Uh, I like the three power for the simple fact that uh, I can, I can act, target acquisition really quickly from one to the other. Um, one power. That reticle just seems to like disappear. You just seem to have the faint outline of crosshairs coming in like this and a crosshair coming up down here. And that's where I'm saying like the reticle, if it was lit a little bit more, would give you more like a red dot um, because then you'd see that dot and your eye would pick it up. Now, clarity on this, oh, this thing is very clear for the budget. I would say this is one of my top two or three uh, optics that I have clarity for budget optics, uh, one to six budget optics. This is probably the top three optics that I have that uh, clarity wise. Uh, this thing is definitely worth the money. The turrets, the click adjustments were spot on. We cited this in at 50 yards. This is half MOA adjustments per click and at 50 yards, that's half of that. So we're at quarter uh, clicks per, M, uh, uh, per click. Uh, this thing tracked just like it should. I'd take my measurements, I'd run it down, run it over. Uh, the one issue I did have is once I did mount this, we uh, it, it was way off the target. Uh, so I did have to crank this down. Um, so I don't know if if they're all gonna come that way, or if mine was just lucky, or if it was the gun, the suppressor, whatever. But uh, that's what I ran into very first to sight this thing in. Uh, we had no issues with it, with the water beat down and uh, dumping water all over it. It held up very well. We have uh, no water in the lens. It is still nice and clear. 
uh, even after we dumped water on it, we were still able to come out and do our little shooting with it, do our little testing with it. Uh, the one thing I will say, if you guys do run the flash kill on, I like the flash kill, but if you've never ran a flash kill, you're gonna get these little like honeycomb black spots all the way around it. Uh, do what you want. Uh, if you're not gonna run it without, if you're gonna run it without the flash kill, some of the better glass you're gonna see for a budget optic. Um, like I said, this thing is feature packed. You guys get a lot of different options. You guys get the flash kill if you want to run it or not. You guys get two different throw levers. Um, you get the push pull quick turret adjustments. The reticle has bullet drop compensation inside it. You have the horseshoe to uh, to gauge out to distance to uh, meter or measure out to distance. So that is very cool. Like I said, very, very packed full of features. Uh, this ran very well on the AK. Uh, one thing I will say, when you guys do get your red win, if you guys do decide to order one of these, it does not come with a battery. Um, Every optic I've seen comes with a battery, so I think that's one other thing that uh, they kind of need to work on is making sure they get a battery in there. I'm going to reach out to these guys again and see if we can test some more of their products. I like videos like this where we test out optics, suppressors, gun accessories, and guns. This is a great channel. Please consider subscribing if you're not already. Leave a comment in the comments down below. Follow me on social medias, and if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Thanks for shooting the breeze with me, guys. We'll see you next time.